Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Today, you guys, we are in Springfield, Ohio. We are at the Springfield Antique Center. There's one of three antique malls that we're gonna try our best to get to today. We got a lot of trouble with us. We've got Mother Tuckers. We've got Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter. We've got Real Nifty Vintage, Jeffrey and Barb. We've got the Traveling Button, Sarah, David, Junk Drunk Mantiques. We're gonna get in here and see what we can't find. Let's do it, guys. One that we're heading into, there is another one right over here. Oh my goodness, plus there's a third one. Let's do it, guys. Alrighty, guys, there you're seeing the back of an Emma Amy. She's off and running. We've got Tina from Mother Tucker's, of course, is with us. I do want to give you guys a quick uh, little panorama here, see what we're working with. There are a number of aisles. Of course, this is simply the aisle that you walk into. Uh, with lots of Fenton, beautiful glass, very excited to see it. Unfortunately, the pricing is more for a collector and not for my reselling budget. Seeing the clear satin glass turtle there, I just recently acquired um, a colonial blue with the tree, so he it becomes a ring holder, so that was cool to see. We're going to walk on down, look, there she is, little Miss Misty, Thrifter Junker, Bandage Haunter lots of space you guys and this is just the tip of the iceberg cannot wait to show you some of the items today now misty was having a hard time here getting the tape measure out of this pig so we're going to pull it out see if it works barely get it there we go boom it works and he is missing his glasses or glasses is well technically his glasses but his scissors but that's an easy fix whether it's uh, you know a vintage antique or contemporary pair. Got lots of display cabinets, and we are seeing, of course, some books. I want to check these out here a little bit further. Seeing one down on the bottom that kind of piqued my interest. It is the Good Cheer book. Uh, it's a pulp. Um, you can tell by the rough edges uh, book. So not the highest quality when it was originally published. At $15, I do decide to leave that one behind. Lots of coin dot here. Whenever I see the coin dot, I have to immediately think, of course, of Danny the Niche Lady. <laughs> it's funny how, you know, um, people's, you know, various hobbies or, or their collections and they kind of imprint on you. So whenever you see it, you know, you get that spark and you immediately think of that person. Obviously, we're looking here at a display cabinet, some precious, precious moments nothing really for us so we're going to move on into the next booth i do see this little marionette this creepy police officer he's obviously had a rough day of it <laughs> he's super cute he's 72 dollars. i'm not familiar with the na name kilroy so i do end up leaving him but we'll spend you for our modest budget of course there is some fashion here. Don't know a whole lot about it. Some milk glass. I'm not seeing anything unusual. Uh, so we're going to move on. Some pretty stuff. That floral pattern, the little night 90s there. It's cute, but definitely not my department. Seeing the hats, I did try them on. And not a single one of them fit. Like to the point where I'm not going to embarrass myself getting that on. <laughs> uh, we have a J.B. Hirsch style little figural lamp here, some pretty little uranium glass, loving the image on our as the pa as the pastel <laughs> words. Little naughty dog down here peeing on the fire hydrant, sir. Got some cute plush, but nothing really overly wowing me. Little Rossbro um frosty here, he's missing his little corn cob pipe. The Mickey ball is cute, but at $90, just not where we need it to be. This booth was really interesting. Saw some Collier magazines. Still keeping my eye out for the artwork of J.C. Lidecker. So I do take a moment here to go through these just to see if there are any. There are not. However, I did want to capture this image. I'm not familiar with this artist, but I think that's a brilliant, um, really dynamic. I love that, that almost turquoise with that uh, burgundy background. Very pretty. Art Deco. This was a tight fit in this booth, I have to say. <laughs> it was a little bit of a, a small maze to get back here. I'm always up for an adventure. 
Uh, if you're claustrophobic, I, I don't know that this would kind of be the booth for you. I'm going to check it out here, leaving no stone unturned. But unfortunately, I don't really see anything that's standing out to me. So we're going to leave that booth behind. Oh, but no, wait. I see this little like indoor croquet set. It was absolutely adorable. Um, the box was for chocolate, so they did place those in there. It wasn't original. Looks very similar. <laughs> it's, um, you know, the vendors are maximizing their space. I'm not mad at it. It is an adventure. Uh, it, it's definitely an adventure when you were recording. See some lithograph there, that Ferris wheel. That was cute. But again, it's just, you know, not where we need it to be for resale. Loving the figural uh, lamp here. Those, the shade is the beaded shade does appear to be original. And that was a way for, for people to kind of diffuse the light. Little paper pulp or paper mache pumpkin here. He's a cute little jack-o'-lantern. We do use birds to $150. So just buckle up, folks, because uh, that's the tip of the iceberg on the paper pulp. Lots of fun little smalls, but again, just nothing was standing out at me at this point. I did see some Christmas. There were a few okay pieces, but nothing that was really wowing me. Nothing that was super unusual. So I'm going to kind of leave that area. Seeing some interesting things. Oh, shoot, that Shirley Temple scrapbook. I wanted to look in there and I totally forgot to. Uh, that's a regret, but... I'll get back there hopefully sooner than later. Uh, so moving on. <laughs> I see this. If you're a child of the 80s, you may recognize him. The toupee is not original. It is a bog lens. It's like a latex hand puppet. These things go for some serious ka -ching. This one, I'm going to peek underneath here so we can check it out together. It's $190. That's the going rate right for those originals. They did do some um, uh, reproductions. They were officially licensed reproductions. Quality is the same. The look is the same. Obviously not worth as much as the originals. These guys were cute. These little mouse on, or pardon me, mice on the mushrooms. But at $16, I really didn't uh, want to take the risk on those. So I did those behind. We do have some beautiful Van Briggle here in the Ming glaze. Um, you know, collector pricing. Uh, I didn't really see the cherub is cute reading the book. That's a little bit of an unusual sculpt. I had never seen that one before. The other pieces are kind of standard. Um, so again, it's that aesthetic thing. While the name Van Briggle uh, does hold weight with many collectors, um, I think for a lot of folk, it, it really boils down to the visual interest of it. This is a beautiful chalkware or composite Art Nouveau bust. They have it priced at $85. It is Victorian originally, but a lot of times what they would do is they would take those original metal, metal, <laughs> metal sculptures, recast them, and put them in chalkware. So vintage but not antique. Kind of giving you a preview here of all of the cases. One thing that did catch my eye were these little Holt Howard-esque Christmas bells. Now, there's obviously three that are missing. That's unfortunate. I did debate on getting them, uh, but at $18, I just decided to leave those behind. Really a wide variety of items in here. We see some contemporary or more modern 80s. I guess she is vintage at this point. Uh, Barbie's in there. We have some Majolica little humidors here. The man with his cap on. Super cute. Uh, but again, just not where I need it to be. I find the figural humidors are a very niche um, market. So I haven't done well with those in the past. Uh, I, the, the human ones, kind of more of the animals, do 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 well. So We've got a little Christmas. We've got a little fall here. These guys are really cute. I'd never seen the little, like, pilgrim pixies or knee huggers uh, at eighteen dollars for the pair, I don't think that's actually kind of think it's a good deal because I've never seen them before. But uh, I did decide to leave them behind because I would have liked to have gotten them a little bit cheaper, just simply for resale. Some okay stuff, Pillsbury. We got a bisque, porcelain, cabbage patch back there. But again, nothing was really speaking my name. Nothing was wowing me. Like, and I really was on a mission. 
um, throughout the entire time in Ohio to find very unique or unusual things. That's not to say that I didn't, you know, pick up things that you haven't seen before, but this I've never seen. Uh, now they have it listed as man of the mountain. I often refer to him as the green man. Um, I, I love that chair. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Probably would be extraordinarily uncomfortable, but aesthetically amazing as is the armchair here. I don't believe the upholstery on that is original to it, but it was done well. So we'll give it a pass. I do love the tacking on it. This settee set was absolutely amazing. Love the spindle work on that. Uh, the tufting. I don't, again, know if the fabric is original. I don't believe that the color would be original to it, though it very well could have. I could be wrong. Alrighty, so here we've got Ransberg, Ransberg Pottery. You know, I did have a very specific request for Ransberg uh, Pottery Cookie Jars. Um, this is actually the first one that I've run across in the wild. Uh, the thing with the Ransberg Cookie Jars that I have found is, is that the paint has a tendency to chip and flake off very easily. Uh, the paint is so bright and crisp on this. We do have a bump to one of the petals down here, but overall the condition is very good. It is below budget and does leave room for profit. So I am specifically selecting this for an individual who has direct emailed me. Thank you very much. They're easy to identify because of the incising on the bottom. Um, so we'll see. Look, it's a David Coleman in the wild. He did find some Fenton Colonial Blue. It is a thumbprint compote. He loved the color. I agree. Unfortunately, it's at $19.99. Um, which for a collector is a great deal, but as resale, uh, a little too high. Uh, the compotes can be a hard sell. It's the color that is really going to sell that piece. This I absolutely love. Um, as we saw earlier with the chalkware uh, bust, the vintage chalkware, probably 50s. This is an original 1800 spelter figural bust. It is mounted on a piece of marble. Um, beautiful. I love the condition of it. Um, uh, it did, it, they would apply like a copper finish to it. It is flaking off. And I love that aesthetically at $25. I'm going to snatch her up. No problem. Usually go anywhere from about 80 to 125. Loving the figural lamp here, just a small side table, kind of little accent lamp uh, at 95. I think that's a great deal for a collector needed it to be a little bit lower. The switch is vintage. I don't think it's original to the piece. I don't think it's period correct. I could be wrong. Um, they did, you know, the Art Nouveau period did have a small resurgence in the 50s, but uh, the condition does look original to it. The socket looks original to it. it. Looks like they did replace the paper insert, the cardboard insert, um, but at 95, again, I just couldn't do it. This guy was absolutely amazing. I have seen a number of the boxes advertising him. I've never seen one actually put together. Now, Sarah has joined us at this point. She's seeing the Harvey Toon, the TV flannel funnies. It's hilarious. I can actually read that on camera now, but a little grubby here. He's a little grubby there on the snout. So not a goose. Do you remember those? You'd put the cassette in and you'd read the story and they were kind of animatronic. Sarah was definitely digging the felt series here. We were trying to identify if all of the characters were present. Of course, in real life, I didn't actually read that it was like a felt backing. Um, so the backs here of the little characters, little cutouts, they do have their fabric backing. So that way you can kind of put them on there and they don't slip around. Sarah was saying, you know, at 15, it's, it is a really good deal. Uh, little Lulu there is who I'm pointing at. We've got Casper and Wendy, the witch, Sarah's pointing to. We weren't sure who the little knockoff Tom and Jerry were. Is that Huey? Is that Huey? Baby Huey? Baby Huey Duck? You'll have to let me know in the comments. I can't remember. I'm going to see if all of the characters are present. Let's see here. The condition. Ooh. Check it out. We're going to, Sarah's going to bust out a rocket here. And of course the paper, or pardon me, the felt backing on it would kind of cling to the board. So super cute, bright, colorful. You know, the box is a little beat up, but overall good condition on the board. And then as she started to pull out more pieces, she's seeing that some of the characters are, you know, they were played with. They're a little beat up. So at $15, she decided to hold off on it. 
Uh, yeah, you're saying that correctly. $950 on that uh, German Black Cat speaker. Okay. I've never seen it before, and it's not to say that Halloween doesn't go high like that. Uh, I have to say that what I have noted within the last year is that the resale value on Halloween at this point, I think we can safely say has surpassed Christmas. That's not to say that Christmas as a whole has not, you know, the popularity has not declined. Uh, I just see that the Halloween market has just grown exponentially and seems to year after year after year. Um, but then again, Halloween has really gained in popularity and decorating. Uh, and with that, with modern decorations, you know, you have people that love their vintage and antiques. They want the things that are original. And that does drive the price up on things. But a nice collection of various holidays. We've got, again, nut cups and uh, Fourth of July. We've got Rossboro here. Um, very traditional. You've got the little milk glass Santa replacement bulbs. We've got some honeycomb, early honeycomb, more paper pulp down here, black cat candy container, 385. We've got the little black cat candy container again at 495. That little chalkware figure was spendy, interesting. Die cut back there, expensive. I'm just going to stay silent and let you guys, that one on the back was $825. Um, this is amazing to see, but holy moly, I like the little nut cup, but he's cute. They're expensive, you guys. You know that I love the devil. I don't know that he's actually an original, though. Though the reproduction, some of the reproductions are very nice. Lots of black cats that I've never seen before. This is quite the collection. Those. Oh, he is creepy. Now I think he is an original one. And oh yes, there's even more. Do you see the one with the light switch on it? That one's very hard to find. Got some really beautiful examples of hard to find ones in here. But again, just not where we need it to be. Look at this. It's just more. It's just simply more. You know, base price is two hundred, and they go up from there. So. Um, beautiful to see, and I absolutely wanted to capture that and share that on camera with you guys, but my goodness, not for our little reselling budget. Oh, no, no, no. Um, we do have some Ross Bro, some Union, Union Plastic also. Little Scarecrow, jack o -Lantern, Scarecrow, the Union uh, Plastic. Oh, look at that candy container, which a little sprinkling in there of some Christmas and a creepy little <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> clown. Uh, there's even a piece of Avon, that roly-poly Santa there. Check out this. Oh my gosh. Victorian era, late 1800s. This, oh, oh, this celluloid cover, that is a spring-loaded latch on the side that's fully intact. Oh my gosh. It's a green patterned velvet. I'm going to talk to you here about it a little bit. Okay, so I did get the album out. We are going to see if the vendor can do a little bit better. The exterior condition is in great condition. Um, it's got some beautiful embossing on the interior. There are some photos that are included. However, it is separating from its spine. Now, it is a easy fix, even for a novice. Um, but at 80, I really don't want to put that money into it. I think 60, given the, the splitting, is fair for where I am at. So. Um, they are calling the vendor to see what's up, and then we'll go from there. Alrighty, while we wait... Oh, I fell in love with this piece, and it's 725 It is the uh, Weller, the Bradford Apple... No, that's Bradford Pear. The Woodcraft uh, lamp here. Oh my gosh. Uh, I didn't even know they made a lamp. I didn't even know they made a lamp. Oh my goodness. Uh, the thing is beautiful. This is absolutely unusual. We're looking at an, a full color plate illustration of measles. It is the household physician. It is first edition. Obviously, there is some spine separation. It was used. Um, unusual subject matter. At $65, I actually kind of regret not getting this. I think it was the condition issue. This is what held me off. And then it happened. I found this shoe nut. Humpty Dumpty Circus. These are pieces to it. The Ringmaster's priced at $285. I was in absolute utter shock. Could not determine if it was for the individual figure or if it was for the full collection. 
the accessories are what really have me the animals there's three clowns i didn't know what was going on i was super excited i was just the heart was beating rapidly uh, this the one clown had an individual price tag of 25 had no clue what was going on so i'm going to talk to you a little bit more about it here good news the vendor did accept our offer so we are getting that beautiful cellulite covered album for sixty dollars i think that is a great get there's still a lot of value in there the displayability on that piece is absolutely amazing um i hope somebody out there loves that as much as i do all right let's get back into it guys Okay, guys, please let me know down in the comments if you guys are interested in these Walt Disney. These are Bisque painted um, figurines, specifically the three Fantasia pieces. I actually have these and I've considered selling them. I just didn't know if there would be any interest in them. They are obviously quite collectible. Uh, so please let me know. I have the two centaurs and, of course, the little cherubs back there on the pedestal. So I hate to see them go, but I'm just I need to make the room for them. So let me know. Hey, Karen Radford, shout out to you, lady. I've actually found this little celluloid-faced Santa with the, the um, satin balls and made like a little assemblage to him, and Karen uh, has him. So I saw another one and just had to, had to get that on film. This actually reminds me of Ariana. It's one of the first things I remember her selling uh, on YouTube, so that was pretty cool. I think she had a white marble. No, that was on Misty's sale. She bought it to Misty's sale. All right, we are going to head down some more cabinets here there were some people on the aisle so i couldn't really give you a full shot all right what am i doing i'm confused didn't even make it three feet and already seeing things the little tin lithograph very um monstro from pinocchio i thought he was really cool but at 125 definitely was not gonna spend that for resale have some amazing books here including the history of the freemasons uh the book was priced at 95 dollars. not a whole lot of room there. <laughs> so, the Schooner, the uh, Humpty Dumpty Circus, the ringmaster was priced by himself. Now, he's not officially part of the Humpty Dumpty Circus. All of the other pieces were. Um, the vendor priced it at 800 for everything, which is a really good deal for all of those pieces. I have never seen the accessories, like the ladders, the chairs, the balls. Um... However, you said you would take 500, which is an even better, <laughs> like, that's a really good deal. The problem is, is that it would be for me, and I just can't, I can't do it. I'm sad. It is a beautiful set. I had the pleasure of seeing it, I guess. We got it on film. Um, so I'm going to hold out hope, maybe somewhere down along the lines you know, we'll find some pieces and we'll just kind of cobble it together like that. But really glad that we got to see it on film together. Heartbroken. <laughs> Alrighty guys, the last thing I'm about to show you in this video is amazing. Now you have seen Nippon Moriyagi before. Oh my goodness, chills. The artistry that is involved in that slip work, it is absolutely amazing. You know, this was accomplished by, you know, the piece has already been fired. Um, so it is a solid piece. And then what they're doing is they're taking various instruments and laying slip on it and very fine and working it with small tools and carving it and adding it and painting. Oh my goodness. You know, they were priced accordingly, but these are small works of art. Look at these. Now, you are seeing here to the right, I think those are a bit more traditional to the things that we see so far as Moriyagi, but the level of art. Do you see the squirrel finial on the back and the detail work on that? Stunning pieces. Um, this is this is Moriyagi elevated. This is the Moriyagi that you know, was found in a fine, refined home. Look at this. It almost looks like lace on there absolutely stunning with a little bit of transfer wear on these beautiful beautiful pieces so glad that i got this on camera i really wanted to share these with you guys and, and you know sometimes going out and reselling doesn't mean that i have to buy everything but i want to share as much of it as we can Alrighty guys, well that is it for today's video. We gotta get out of here before I change my mind about the circus and spend money on myself that I don't need to be spending it on. 
<laughs> I hope that you guys did have a good time uh, in today's Shop With Me video. We're going to hit up some more antique malls. Um, and on that note, you guys, until next time, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.